Hydraulic punch driver from Vivor. Got it right here. I've just opened it up. I'm going to demonstrate this. I'm very, very familiar with how these work because for over 40 years I worked as an electrician. Of course, the brand we always used was a Greenlee. But those are very, very expensive. So if you are, I shouldn't really say weekend warrior, but if you have projects where you need to pull what I call knockouts or you need to punch holes in steel or light gauge stainless, this will do the job without breaking the bank. Uh, let's say you are making your own prognosticator that you've designed and you need to punch some holes for hydraulic lines or air lines or electrical. This will do the job. I'm going to get you in close here. We'll unbox this and I'll show you how everything works and we'll compare it to some Greenlee objects. So first off it comes in a nice steel case and the uh, Latches are actually spring-loaded. It's kind of nice. So everything, I haven't unpacked this yet. It, we're, there was a manual in there on top. So you'll have the, the punch head itself. And of course this here will be the hydraulic pump. Set them off to the side here for the moment. As you get into here, there's going to be your punches. We'll get into the sizes here in a minute after I get everything unpacked. Your driver arbors. And more little punches in here, and then I'll get all these unpacked here, and we'll go through them. And, whoa, you get a step drill for drilling pot, your pilot hole for your first cut. So I'll get all these unwrapped. Okay, so got everything unwrapped here. We'll go through the sizes, starting with the largest. we got four, three and a half, three, two and a half, two, inch and a half, inch and a quarter and I'm going to have them fall over one inch three quarter inch half inch and you have your arbor which we'll get into here in a minute for the larger ones and you'll need the smaller one for your uh, half inch knockout and it looks like the three quarter as well okay, getting into exactly how you pull knockouts or punch knockouts or punch metal or however you whatever you want to call it these here are a couple of Greenlee punches and I carried these for years and they are the style what they call slug buster and to explain that I'm going to show here you have two pieces like this instead of just a, a straight and let me find a straight one to demonstrate here okay give you a little demonstration here this is what they call a slug buster it's a, it's a Greenlee trademark and this is not a slug buster what this does is it breaks the knockout into two pieces. I've got one here that I've already punched. So you can see you'll end up with two pieces of metal like this. And you won't have something that curls around the shaft that becomes difficult to remove. Well, one thing I noticed here with the V-Roars is they also have the Slug Buster design. Although they can't call it Slug Buster. Because that's Greenlee's trademark. So that's the difference there. The way we used to do this a lot was uh, you put a one inch socket on there and ratchet and you crank it down and you punch your hole. Uh, this here having a hydraulic unit makes it a lot easier, a lot quicker. But once in a while you'll have a place where you can't get this big head and everything in and you'll have to go back to the old fashioned way but I said did this for years. So we'll get on to demonstrating how this works exactly. If you're starting with nothing and you just have a blank, you're going to have to drill a 3 8 hole, actually make it a little bit bigger than the 3 8 for either your half inch or your 3 quarter inch knockout that you're going to make. And this will just screw right in here. 
And uh, let's take the three quarter here just to do one. That will slip over that shaft. And I have a junk Hoffman box here we're going to demonstrate this stuff on. Okay, so I've got this old, what we call Hoffman box, JC box, whatever you want to call it. And I'm going to go to a three quarter inch. I've already got a half inch hole here. And this is uh, pretty stout. This is uh, probably 14, 12 or 14 gauge steel. So this is pretty stout. So you would put your cup on there. That would follow with your punch. Then there's a knurled nut that goes on the end of it. There are alignment marks on the cup, which I'll show you here. Let's grab one of these other ones. These are your alignment marks. So if you make a cross where you're cutting with a pencil, you can align these marks to make sure you're perfectly centered. So then it's just a matter of taking the pump here. Right, get a tighten the foot up. And there we have it punched. Then you just release the little wheel here, which will let the, the bleed back out. Remove all of this. And there's our slug punched. So now we have three quarter inch knockout. Okay, to swap over to the larger sizes, just remove this. And I would put the nut back on it so you don't lose it. And you will put in the larger arbor. You'll have to have at least a half inch knockout already made for this to fit into. So now I know somebody's going to ask, what if you've already got Greenlee or Cyclone punches? Will they work with this? Can, will they work, screw onto that arbor? Here's a Greenlee. See, the cup does not fit, nor does this screw on. So, no, you cannot use your Greenlee or Cyclone parts. You would have to use the Vivor punches. So let's punch something a little bigger here. Let's grab a two inch. I'm going to take this half inch hole right here. Put the cup on there. Pass it through. And here again, if you're going for precision and you want to make a precision hole, have some cross hatches on there so you can put your alignment marks on it. We'll see how well this works on this heavy gauge. Perfect hole. And there again, the slug buster style where it splits the knockout so that the pieces come right out. Okay, let's say you need to have a knockout centered on that cross right there. I just made a cross on there. You'll need to drill a hole first. And I'm going to use the bit that they supplied here. That was a hot chip that got my belly there. So you'll need a hole at least big enough for this shaft. We've got that there. I've got the small arbor in the punch. And I think we'll punch a three quarter inch hole here. Put the cup on. On 
twist my head here. Now slip this on the back. Screw on the nut here. Now since we're going to punch a larger hole, I don't necessarily have to center this, but I can use these marks right here. Hopefully you can see that. There's a white mark right here. I line with this line, mark here and this line. Of course, there's also ones on the other side as well. So we'll punch this first. There's our slug split in two. Now I'll change the arbor. Put in the larger one, and I'm going to go with the biggest punch there. We're going to put a four inch hole in here. So I know somebody's going to want to know how well it'll work on, with a four inch because that's going to be a bunch of pump in there. So there's our four inch die. Put the cup on. We'll slip that in the hole. marks aligned here. You might be able to see this a little better now. You can see I can move this as I need to to get my marks aligned. If you have two line, then the other two will also align if you drew your line straight. So here we go. See how much pumping this takes. There it is. You'll always hear it'll always punch in different steps when you're using these large knockout punches. So you want to wait till it pops free. So we'll release the head here. There's our perfect hole for a four inch knockout. Of course, these, this big one here is not what they call a slug buster. You'll just have a big disc. I'll show you here in a minute. You'll end up with that. But can't you just use a hole saw? I hear that a lot, and I used to hear it from a lot of my apprentices. Uh, I just want to use a hole saw. Well, there's a couple things about it. Yes, a hole saw does work, and yes, a hole saw will make that hole in most materials. However, it creates a lot of shavings, and it is not necessarily accurate. So it depends on what you're doing. If you're doing something where you're going to be using ceiling lock nuts and ceiling rings, you don't want to use a hole saw. You want to use an actual knockout punch. If you are working on something that has sensitive electronics where metal filings could uh, create havoc, and I would worked on one job where you were not allowed to have a hole saw on the job site, period. If you needed a hole saw for something, you had to go to the tool crib, you had to fill out a form what you were using it for, where it was being used because there was a lot of sensitive electronics and PLCs and they didn't want metal shavings flying all over the place. Yes, when you drill a pilot hole you do make some metal shavings, but they're not as fine as when you're using a hole saw and there's certainly not as many of them. So yes, you could use a hole saw. I've always been old school and preferred not to. So that's how you use a hydraulic knockout punch. It's just that easy. I, like I said, I had years and years and years of experience doing this. Uh, of course, the brand I always used was Greenlee because that's what was provided by the contractor, and I did not have to supply my own. However, if you are doing something, again, if you're manufacturing something on your own, 
or you need to punch holes in steel or lightgate stainless um, and depends on the alloy on stainless. Now be careful when you're starting to punch stainless or you're going to uh, these cups will explode if you're trying to punch too hard of a stainless. You need to have punches actually for stainless if you're going to go with heavy gauge. Because I have seen that happen more than once. And when they explode, then pieces fly all over like shrapnel. So keep that in mind. Don't, uh, don't use a tool for what it's not designed for. Otherwise, I mean, it works just fine. This is, uh, I'd say it's at least 14 gauge steel. Uh, this is a box made by Hoffman. It's a quality box and it's some tough steel. So this will do the job if you need to punch some holes. Okay, so this was provided me by Vivor to demonstrate and I agreed because I know how to use these and I thought this would be a good little demonstration and I wanted to kind of compare it to a Greenlee. Uh, it does pretty much the same thing. However, again, if you already have Greenlee Cyclone or one of the other brand uh, punches and dies, they will not fit on this arbor. They're, these are pro proprietary, there we go, to this unit. However, they appear to be well made and they do have that slug busting uh, capability on the smaller sizes, which is really great. Uh, getting a slug stuck on this arbor, when it, once it gets folded over, you might be spending some time with a couple pairs of channel locks trying to get that off of there. So the, the busted slug is always nice. There'll be a link in the description if you'd like to get a hold of one of these. No, they're not cheap. It's not a $10 tool by any means. However, it is way less than the professional grade like Greenlee or Cyclone. So if you got anything out of this, appreciate getting a thumbs up. Always helps the channel. Roger in the shop. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.